In recent years, access to high-speed internet has become increasingly important for people around the world. This includes working remotely, staying connected with others, accessing educational resources, and a range of other purposes. However, many areas still lack reliable internet options, particularly in rural and remote areas. This is where Starlink comes in. Starlink is a satellite internet service provided by SpaceX, founded by the famed entrepreneur Elon Musk. The service aims to provide high-speed internet to people all over the world, including in hard-to-reach places like much of New Zealand. Fortunately for us, New Zealand is one of the first countries to receive the Starlink internet service. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Starlink internet in New Zealand, exploring its benefits and challenges, how it compares to traditional internet providers and how you can get it. Whether you live in a rural area without reliable internet or simply want to learn more about the latest in internet technology, hopefully you find this video useful. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Let's start by looking at Starlink as a company and how their service works. Starlink was founded in 2015 by SpaceX, an American aerospace company. SpaceX has a goal to reduce space transportation costs and enable the colonization of Mars. The latter part of that goal explains why SpaceX credits Starlink, as not only will Starlink provide positive cash flow to fund that goal, but it also proves it is possible to provide high speed internet access from satellites. The service works by deploying a network of thousands of small satellites into low Earth orbit, which communicate with ground stations on Earth to provide high speed internet access. So far, they've launched 3,500 small satellites into low Earth orbit, with plans to eventually deploy up to 42,000. Having just 10% of their planned satellites in operation at present, you can see here that they already service big markets including North America, most of South America, Western Europe, a couple nations in Asia, and Australia and New Zealand. As of December 2022, SpaceX announced they have signed up over 1 million customers. When you sign up for Starlink, there are two charges. The first is the Starlink kit, which provides all of the hardware required to access the internet. This includes the Starlink dish, a base for the dish, a Wi-Fi router, and all the cables required. The second is the monthly subscription fee. Now let's talk about the plans Starlink currently is offering in New Zealand. The basic offer is called residential, which of course is to connect your household to the internet. This deal has no contract and a simple 30 day trial. If you're not satisfied with the service, Starlink will take back the hardware and provide you a full refund. The dish is provided, but the installation isn't. So Starlink provides instructions when you start on how to install and set everything up. They also have an app which communicates with the dish and provides real-time data to set it up correctly. Before installing the dish, this will help you find an optimal spot to install it. Currently in New Zealand, there are two prices available for the hardware. If you live in a rural location, you can purchase the Starlink kit for just $199 at the time this video was made. If, however, you don't live in a rural location, you can get the kit for $729. There may also be a shipping and handling charge. When we look at the monthly recurring subscription cost, this comes to around $159 a month. The second option they have is called Business, which, as you'd expect, targets remote and rural businesses. These users receive a superior offering to the residential ones with an upgrading antenna on the dish, higher throughput allocation allowing them to receive better speeds, and better extreme weather performance. They also receive 24-7 prioritized support and a public IPv4 address. Unlike the residential plans, however, the business plan has a monthly data cap of between one and six terabytes. Starting with the hardware, the improved performance comes at a higher cost of $4,200. The monthly subscription charges depends on the data cap selected from $426 for the one terabyte cap, $840 for two terabytes, all the way up to $2,507 for six terabytes. So it doesn't come cheap for businesses. The third option is called Roam, which caters to those that are always on the move and don't want to be limited by having a permanently installed dish on their house. This dish is again an upgrade on the residential one as it has a wider field of view and enhanced GPS capabilities to connect to more satellites at a time for more consistent connectivity. It also makes it more stable when installed on a moving vehicle, such as a motorhome, where its field of vision is always changing. The hardware cost is currently set at $729, and the monthly charge is split into two categories. If you want to just use the dish in New Zealand, the monthly charge is $199 a month. If, however, you want to take it overseas, this will instead set you back $340 a month. Unlike the residential plan, which charges monthly continuously, the Roam plan is only charged in monthly increments. What this means is that you can easily turn your subscription on and off, and you'll only be charged for the days your plan is active. This means it could be useful for those with a batch, or those that travel sporadically in their motorhomes, for example. And finally, we have the maritime plan, which is useful for those who have a yacht and want uninterrupted service from almost any ocean on Earth. The hardware has been updated here as well, with the dish having a much lower profile to better suit a vessel. 
Like the Roam package, Maritime also charges in monthly increments with the ability to easily turn it on and off and only get charged for when it's in use. Like the business package, the hardware cost for the Maritime unit is $4,200. There are also two subscription plans available here with different data caps. You can get 1TB for $1,700 or 5TB for $8,520. In addition to the four packages I covered, there's a fifth due for release later in 2023 called Aviation, which caters to those with an aircraft. If you have a private jet or are the CEO of Air New Zealand, perhaps this could work for you. So we've covered a bit about who Starlink is, how their service works and what plans they offer customers. Let's now discuss how they stack up against other satellite internet providers to rural customers. There are four main competitors for Starlink in the rural satellite internet space. Get Gravity, Woi, Wireless Nation and Farmside. They each offer several options to access the internet through traditional copper and fiber cables via 3G and 4G networks or even satellites like Starlink. If we first take a look at speeds, Starlink promises customers download speeds of between 100 and 200 megabits per second and upload speeds from 10 to 20. If we look at the competitors, excluding their fiber services which are only offered in larger centers, Wireless Nation's fastest plan offers a download speed of just 50 megabits per second and it was the same for Farmside and Get Gravity. Woi on the other hand offered speeds of up to 80 megabits per second. Looking at the upload speeds, all four providers are capped at 10 megabits per second. So based on this information, Starlink is up to twice as good as their competitors in the market. To verify Starlink's reported speeds, I found an article from a year ago putting it to the test. Over a three month period, getgravity.nz found the average download speed with Starlink to be around 133 megabits per second and the average upload to be 15. This offers reassurance that Starlink's estimations of their speeds were correct and these results were from over a year ago when they had much fewer satellites in orbit so it's likely better now. Now let's assess the costs. Looking at their highest specification unlimited satellite internet plans, Get Gravity charges $149 a month, Woi $159, Farmside $199 and Wireless Nation $249. This places Starlink somewhere in the middle charging $159 a month. In terms of satellite costs, that depends on several factors including the contract term and plan selected. Get Gravity charge anywhere from $495 to $1999 with a $19 a month lease fee for the satellite. Farmside charges $799 for the installation and Woi charges $495 for the install. However, they didn't disclose the cost of their satellites. Wireless Nation didn't disclose any of the information about their service on their website. Starlink, of course, has a hardware cost of anywhere between $199 and $729, giving it a very competitive cost both to set up and in monthly charges when compared to other services in the market. You can also set it up yourself, saving money in that aspect too. According to Get Gravity themselves, it took about three hours to install and align with satellites via their app. So all in all, Starlink is priced well as compared to their competitors in the satellite internet space. If we instead looked at traditional phone line connections, the pricing is definitely higher. However, given our reliance these days on the internet for almost everything from work to school and social, the speed likely makes up for it for most rural households. To cite a couple disadvantages of Starlink in the market today, a big one is the lack of local support and technicians. All the other providers have a strong presence in New Zealand and as such they are likely to provide better ongoing service to their customers. There are also reports that the included Wi-Fi router has a subpar range and the speeds can be highly variable throughout the day. Aside from that, Starlink offers a fast and innovative new solution for New Zealand's rural population and their internet needs. Thinking beyond New Zealand, this technology presents a huge opportunity for developing nations to increase their connectivity with the world and have the same access to information as those in developed countries. Starlink has shown the strength of its service by quickly re-establishing internet access in places of conflict such as Ukraine or places where natural disasters wiped out traditional communication infrastructure as we saw recently in Hawke's Bay after Cyclone Gabriel. If you want to learn more about Starlink services in New Zealand, you can check them out at starlink.com or you can also purchase their hardware kits at your local Noel Leeming. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see more content just like this in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.